everyone. I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast that dares to ask the universal question. Hey, Jamie, what you watching? Is it really universal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's asking this. It's on oh, everyone's well, lips. I'll go with that. <laughs> well, if that's on everyone's lips, then maybe this will be up everyone's nose. Because the first Ew. thing I'm going to be talking about is cocaine bear. <laughs> oh, I didn't know who was going to bring it up first, but... White lines. I guess... <laughs> Did, uh... So you got to see it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Okay, awesome. And I thought it was really fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a good time. The I think the uh, ambulance sequence is the <laughs> the hands down for me the best part of the whole movie. Like that whole thing was just hilarious uh, to me. I think that Weta did a really good. I've heard some complaints about the CGI that the, the CGI looks crap. I mean, it doesn't look perfect. Like I don't. I wouldn't look at that and go, oh, that's real bear. But Weta did it. and <laughs> Oh, that is real bear right there. Yeah. You could put some barbecue sauce on that. <laughs> oh, that's real. That's good bear. <laughs> that's real bear. Uh, but I think they did a good job. And the uh, little baby cubs, they were so cute. Like, I, I had fun. I do think it could have used a little more carnage. Well, uh, sure, you know. but... I, I think we are coming from a place, if you're like me, where it's like, the movie should just be cover to cover, the bear doing cocaine, and then eating people. <laughs> yes. and and That's really all I need. <laughs> and what what uh, Elizabeth Banks dared to do is to try to tell kind of a story about, you know, like the, the whole movie is ultimately about like parents and children and that kind of thing like every relationship in the movie is a parent child relationship and it is yeah ray Liotta and his son of mm -hmm. course our I... main cast and even the bear mm -hmm. yeah 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 and and even the the detective who's probably the best character in the movie uh the detective who's like you know has this real almost parental relationship with this dog where he's like i don't know if this is the right dog for me but i kind of love this dog and Anyway, he was a cute little dog. <laughs> it is very cute little dog, and um, and also like you know, kind of in the background, not only Ray Liotta and his son, but his son and his child. You know, so like a lot, a lot of that stuff going on. And I don't think it gets mired down in that. There are still plenty no. of scenes of the. I'll tell you what. Here's what I like most about Cocaine Bear. Uh, for my money, is the fact that there are numerous scenes of that bear doing cocaine. Yes. Yeah, yes. that bear loves cocaine. There is no doubt. or And that's so obvious. There's a scene where he's climbing a tree and he's almost after the kid, but there's a guy in the tree, next tree over who is just covered in cocaine. And as the bear is like halfway up the tree, he can, he smells it. And he's like, oh shit. And so he completely changes course and goes after that guy. And I just think, that's great. He's just like, oh, what's that? <laughs> he <laughs> loves his cocaine. Cocaine, you say? How about I climb this tree <laughs> instead? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's tough. Like, what do you say about Cocaine Bear? Because it, it's, it takes itself very unseriously. Um, like, it's a, it's a very silly movie at times. But there is also some pretty good gore oh yeah and uh i love the i love the kids too like i think they're good actors and i always it's kind of sad i always feel the need to point that out if there are <laughs> children and they're acting well <laughs> you know just because you know typically you don't know what to expect from kids when you put them on camera and i thought these kids did a good job yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I think it was Elizabeth Banks who pointed out, like, these kids also do cocaine. Yes. And Which is I very funny. thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not, not to the extent that, you know, the bear does cocaine. No, but it just, to me, it was so funny because a lot of movies wouldn't touch that. Like, I can totally see a lot of directors not being willing to 
go that direction, even though it's not like a deeply, darkly serious thing or anything like that. It's, but I actually heard some audible gasps in the audience when we were watching that. And I was like, huh. <laughs> On one hand, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> On the other hand, I'm like, all right, you guys need to settle down. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. I, but, I, you know, that that's one of the things I liked about it is like, oh, this this movie is going to turn a little cutesy with the addition of these kids. And mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, no, they're doing cocaine in the woods. Okay. We, okay. Good. I'm, yeah. And then, and then the kid at what he's like, it was fucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's very it, like it, it's a pretty funny movie. Like I said, I think the detective is maybe the funniest character. Um, it, it's pretty funny. It's gory enough, and I, I think you're totally right that that like centerpiece ambulance scene is the best of the movie. But but it's really good. Like if that is your high point, you're you're making a movie that I can enjoy. And you know, I think I said this. I was I was talking about it on one of the bonus episodes after I saw it, and I I was like, you know, the title of the movie sold me on it because there's nothing I love more in a movie than a, an animal eating people. And if you introduce the fact that that bear is also on cocaine while it's eating people you've kind of got me already you just don't have like as long as you don't fuck it up i'm gonna have a pretty good time with it and and i thought it was well done you know like i i, I think it's imperfect i think you know some of the stuff with ray Liotta and his kid is a little you know a little all over the place and even though it is very much a movie about like parents and children I don't know that it delivers on that theme in a completely satisfying way, but that's, I mean, kind of a minor complaint. Um, all things being equal because it delivers on the premise of here's a bear on cocaine eating people and, yes. and wrapping a story around that, that at least makes sense and is, is satisfying enough. Um, you know, I don't think it's, one of the best movies I've ever seen or anything, but I'm certainly glad that the movie exists and, and is as fun as it is. Like it's a good party movie. Oh yeah. And I was really happy with the ending, you know, and oh, I, yeah. I went in and I was like, Oh man, please, please let them do like a Lake Placid ending with this, you know, versus like a Jaws ending and, or a Grizzly ending. <laughs> and, uh, and Brian's like, ah, oh, there's no way. There's no way. You've got a bear hopped up on cocaine eating people. This is not going to end well for that bear. And I'm like, we'll see. <laughs> and I actually was really happy with the ending. Yeah. Yeah. The ending was very solid as well. Um, yeah. It's a it, like, you know, it, it's one of those movies that I don't think it cost a ton of money to make. And I think it did better than expected. Um, and in fact, I saw something saying that like between this and violent night and some other movie, I'm trying to think what the other example was, but, um, it just paves the, the way for a lot of weirdo, you know, kind of genre concepts of like, oh, we don't have to just do a sequel or a prequel or a reboot or a remake. If somebody has a crazy enough idea, then let's put it on the screen. And was it Megan? Yeah, yeah, I think that was the other one. So. Yeah, because I mean, you know, solely because of the amount of uh, attention and money that Megan brought in, they have was it Paramount has opened up a like a horror section of Paramount that they're going to be really focusing on, and they're aiming to get I think five to six horror movies out by next year. Great, or this year and next year, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> like i'm fine with that yeah yeah I yeah i mean right don't it doesn't have to be you know just megan two three four and five like do do megan's and cocaine bears and violent nights like do the stuff that sounds kind of bonkers and let that be you know like for every three of them you make one of them will hit yeah and and that'll be great like we're, we're we're all better off as a society with more, you know, Megan's and cocaine bears. I totally agree. I mean, even look back at the eighties when you had, you know, three and four horror movies coming out every weekend at times, mm -hmm. they all weren't great, but 
there a lot of them were. And so that's what I'm fine with them flooding the market. <laughs> Just come on, give me more reasons to go to the movies. That's what I say. Yeah, yeah. I've really uh, had a good time lately because uh, um, usually Sunday mornings I sneak off to go see a movie. Every now and again, like one of the kids will go with me. Like we'll do family movies on Saturdays if, if you know, there's a movie out that all the kids want to see, like the Ant-Man movie. Like we all went to see that on a Saturday afternoon, that kind of thing. And, but Sunday mornings, you know, like the 10 30, 11 30 kind of showing that's my time. And that's when I saw cocaine bear. And it was also really funny of um, when I saw cocaine bear at like 11 AM on a Sunday, it like, I go in with, uh, another dude who just much like myself looked like he had snuck away to go see cocaine bear on a Sunday morning instead of being in church with all the decent people. And <laughs> anyway, uh, we kind of acknowledge each other on the way in. And then on the way out, we were kind of walking beside one another. And he was like, so what do you think about that? And I was like, I thought it was really fun. I thought, you know, you know, without spoilers, but I was like, yeah, I thought the end of it was really funny. And, uh, you know, that, that beer did a lot of cocaine and that made me real happy. And he was like, yeah, yeah, that was all right. And so I liked the early Sunday morning, like, hey, I'm going to get out of the house for a little bit and I don't have to deal with the kids unless one of them wants to go with me, you know, for an appropriate movie. Like, no, the kids came to Cocaine Bear um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But that's, you know, I love going to the movies, to your point, and having a good excuse to do that of like, oh, yeah, there's a movie. Like, there, are, I want to see the new Scream movie, and I didn't get to that yet, but I probably will next weekend, so... um you know, that's, I, I like having movies to go see. Yeah. I, we, I like to go early on the weekends too, because it's usually very quiet. Uh, you don't have to fight you know, <laughs> with people to get good seats. I mean, well, the way things now, m most theaters, I think now do, you know, you get advanced mm. seats, which is perfect for me because I was that person that was always anxious until I got my seat. I was full of anxiety and I would get there really early. Cause I just, I like to sit, I'm like Sheldon. I like to sit in a specific spot and <laughs> I get real nervous if you no. Know, so this whole, you can get your tickets ahead of time has relaxed me a lot. <laughs> now I don't worry. I don't care how long it takes to get through the concession line, mm -hmm. <laughs> but also they're usually cheaper if you go in the morning. And I like that too. You know, I'm I'm one of those people that's got the uh, uh, the Regal app because there's a Regal, you know, right down the road from me, mm -hmm. and so I've got the app for that. And I mean, it certainly pays for itself because if we take the kids to the movies and just at the concession stand alone, you know, getting that discount is, you know, like it more more than worth it. But also, like for my Sunday morning jaunts. Uh, it's like, all right, well, I'll, you know, dial up a ticket to this thing, reserve my seat, and it cost me like 55 cents. So, you know, I, f I, f I feel right, nice. right. I, f I feel like I'm getting one over on the man, <laughs> which is absolutely not the case because I'm paying, you know, 20 bucks a month for this. But, um, but I, again, I get my, my money's worth out of this thing. It's, uh, it's fun. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Moral of the story, cocaine, cocaine bear, uh, pretty fun. So, you know, surprising, yes, surprising no one. The guy who has seen Grizzly 47 times thought cocaine bear was a hoot. <laughs> now, and now I want the Grizzly remake where it's like, all right, th this time did it's you, not going to be funny. Did you watch Grizzly 2? Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's very disappointing. Yeah, I actually got it for Brian for Christmas, mainly because I wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yikes. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, I, well, it, it was unfinished. And th then the movie begs the question, can you, in fact, make a movie entirely out of public domain footage? And, and the answer is you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, should you? It's not going to be very <laughs> successful, but can you do it? Sure. Sure. 
Um, yeah, but Grizzly 2 is, you know, there's, what, five minutes of actual Grizzly stuff? And the rest of it's all just, you know, like uh, stock footage that was purchased from, you know, uh, Adobe or something. A lot of drone shots of forest and that kind of thing. And you can oh, tell. full performances of these bands that are at this thing. <laughs> right. like, full fucking songs. Th- these festivals yeah. that have 37 people at it. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and... And like the the thing that really sucks about Grizzly too, um, other than just about everything, is the 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 fact that when they go to this like clear stock footage or B roll that they've purchased to fill out the film, the quality of the film is way better than the stuff that was shot you know forever ago when they were making Grizzly too. And so it's like you didn't even bother to put a filter over this or something to try to have it match. Yeah. No. And no, we don't have time for that. Yeah. It, just, it it feels so lazy and it's such a cash grab and it's a bummer. That that movie is a real disappointment on every level. Like Grizzly 2 deserved better. If you were going to make that, then, you know, spend the money and make it. I agree. Yeah. Okay, well, moving away from bears, well, maybe I don't know what your next movie is. Uh, what what did uh, what did you want to bring up first? Uh, let's talk about. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll, I'll pit stop in into Shutterland for a second, and let's talk about a movie called Spoonful of Sugar, which Does is it help the medicine go down. Well, that's <laughs> that's the idea, right? Um, so Spoonful of Sugar is a a shutter original you know or or an acquisition um that is a shutter exclusive at present and it is um okay so here's the premise spoonful of sugar is about a crazy young woman who gets a job babysitting a child who is maybe autistic doesn't speak maybe autistic maybe there, there's something deeper wrong with the kid and the babysitter tries to do like a, a real hand that rocks the cradle kind of thing where she's bananas enough that she's like oh i can replace this mother who doesn't actually care about the child and you know become the lover of the husband and it has a kind of a lifetime movie plot even though it's done more artistically like it's it's a pretty interestingly directed movie um and the spoonful of sugar of the title is the fact that the the young woman the babysitter in question is microdosing lsd for her anxiety and starts to treat the kid with some lsd as well and uh anyway like one thing leads to another and there's a you know kind of a twist ending although if you if you see where the movie's going, I don't know how surprising it is. You know, like the movie builds to it in a way that you're like, oh, okay, well, this all, this seems like the natural way that this movie would end. Um, it's It's not great, but it's kind of interesting. And it reminded me a lot, strangely, of something like Saint Maud. Uh, which Saint Maud is a much, much, much That's better movie. Weird. I don't know why, but while you were talking about this movie, Saint Maud was flashing in my head, and I have no idea why because I don't think anything you said would make you automatically think of that. But yeah. Well, it's just we've been working together that long that you were reading my mind. I now. am we've... psychic. Yeah. That's why we're going to be incredible when we hit the gin rummy circuit. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, they'll never know what kid them with. <laughs> right right <laughs> just i'll lift an eyebrow and you'll be like oh spades is what we're playing apparently um yeah yeah it's it, it, like a spoonful of sugar is is it feels like a shutter original movie and for for better and worse you know like it is that kind of 
lower budget or like it's going for character and mood and atmosphere as opposed to any sort of spectacle and I, whereas i feel like saint maud is kind of a spectacle or at least moments of that movie feel you know at for at, at the risk of using a, a misbegotten term but it that movie feels elevated in a way that spoonful of sugar does not and i just mean that it like that is so much more self-assured and and interesting and and captivating like i love saint maud um and I, this movie i thought was okay uh it has some interesting stuff in it and it it's like really horny <laughs> uh, as a movie and i'm never against that like if you know some people want to get down in their movie i'm i'm totally cool with that um and so you know it, it yeah it's fine it's fine well i do think that's an interesting premise considering that they have begun uh sort of relooking like putting a lot of resources into looking at LSD as alternative therapy again. Uh, whereas, you know, years ago with Timothy Leary and, and Timothy, is it Timothy Leary or Timothy? Leary, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, like they had started to do some serious work with it back then. And then we got into the whole, uh, like there was a lot of problems with those experiments but they have really recently started to put resources back into seeing if it would be helpful. And it seems to be for people suffering from things like PTSD. Uh, if you microdose them, it turns out that a lot of people have had successful therapies using LSD that have lasted for years, you know, five years down the road they are still feeling the positive effects from it. Meaning that, you know, where that, whereas they used to wake up in the middle of the night and cold sweats and nightmares, it doesn't seem to plague them that much anymore. So that's kind of interesting that they would, that there, that this film kind of focuses on that. Yeah. from what it sounds like. So for sure. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of the hook of the movie really is like, Oh yeah, here's this experimental treatment that this, you know, the, the main character, the babysitter character is totally bought into it is like doing a paper about it, but also you're like, well, you were also kind of nutty and this is maybe not helping. Uh, this is maybe not, you know, grounding you in reality. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too, is that, that it is, it is a method that, we have to be careful with because you know too much or wrong candidate and it could end up going sideways yeah there yeah there, there there's a a point where her her therapist is like hey you're not using more than i'm prescribing right she's like oh totally not meanwhile she's just like i drop her on the tongue whenever she's getting a little sideways <laughs> Uh-oh, she's been hanging around Cocaine Bear. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, she and Cocaine Bear would just wreak havoc. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe that's how the two movies are related. So, yeah, but, you know, it, I, I like the fact that Shudder is is showcasing these kinds of movies. Like, I don't think it's great. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's there. there's interesting stuff about it, and there, there are definitely people who are going to enjoy it more than I did. Um, but... You know, it, th this is the kind of movie that they ought to be showcasing is these kind of smaller indie uh, kinds of movies. Like, De like Deadstream, I think, is the better example of this, where that movie is, like, way more fun and audacious and uh, a, a good time, as opposed to Spoonful of Sugar, which is a little more somber and very self-serious and maybe doesn't quite pay off as well. But, you know, you, you take the swings and even though this is, you know, a bit of a of, of, of foul ball to extend this metaphor, but, uh, you know, it's still like worthy of, of being on something like a shutter. And recently I got a subscription to Screenbox so I could watch another movie I'll talk about later. And 
it's funny because it's like, oh well, Shutter is just so much more the 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 genuine home for actual horror fans. Like Screenbox has a couple of exclusives right now that are interesting, but they've got a long way to go before getting the kind of cachet in the library that a Shutter does. Well, well it took them a while too. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, look, hey, we all win if. Right. If, if Screenbox is like, no, 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 we're going to compete with Shudder on that level, then I'm okay play- with that. Right, right. Then it, make more movies, get it more exclusives. Let's, by all means, let's do it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, enough about middling Shudder exclusives. What, what else you got for me? Okay, well, last weekend, I decided that it had been a while, and we had recently watched Room 237, uh, which is one of my all-time favorite docs. I sure, <laughs> just yeah, love yeah. that so much. But we'd been um, watching that and a few other docs, and I was just like, oh. I got hit with the bug to watch my Amityville Horror again, which is... Ooh, yeah. The uh, documentary made by, or at least featuring, uh, Danny. Uh, what the? What is her? What Lutz. Is her? Lutz. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And he was the middle child or the oldest child. He was about ten, I think, when maybe a little younger when all that stuff was going. He's the kid who got his hands slammed in the window when the window shut, and. This is him talking about how he perceives all of this stuff as being very real. And of course, there has been uh, over the years, like I know how big of a fan you are of the Warrens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big, uh, famously a big supporter. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you and Brian, right neck and neck with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anytime their names come up, it's like, Rawr! just vitriol. <laughs> but, um, there has obviously been, you know, some controversy about this story in the past 50 years where, you know, initially the Lutzes are like, oh, this is what happened. And then, of course, the Jay Anson book that came out of it that is phenomenal. And then the original film, which I love. But then it started coming out that it was a hoax, that they have invented the whole thing over a couple of bottles of wine and decided to tell this story as a scam and you know there's all these different takes on it is it real is it not did, did they go through anything did they i mean did something happen and they just embellished it did nothing happen at all of course there have been five families i think to this point who have lived in that home since the the Lusses fled and not one of them has reported anything happening as a matter of fact they've all reported that nothing has happened and of course uh um, Lorraine Warren has said nothing has happened because the house was exercised. Yeah, well, there's all of that. But this is the story of the son who witnessed everything, who went through everything, and he believes it's real. And I believe he believes it. Like, I, I don't think he's making it up. I think he, now, whether or not it actually happened is a whole different thing. But I'm just saying, I believe he believes it. I really do. Yeah. And it seems to have plagued his entire life. Plus, the one thing that is 100% clear while watching this is that he had a deep-seated hatred for George. He hated that man. And he actually said he was happy when he died. Like, he he found him to be abusive. He said he had no parental skills whatsoever. Like he just flat out hated that man. And a lot of that seems to be kind of tied together. And there are also theories that maybe this tumultuous relationship coming into the home is what caused a lot of what they experienced. Now, I know you tend to be more pragmatic and I believe your stance on it is that nothing happened at all. But <laughs> I'm, I could be misremembered. No, no, no. That, that, that's accurate. That's, I think that. Okay. Yeah, I think the bottles of wine. Like, I, I do think that they, you know, the, the Lutzes, the parents, 
you know, told the kids, here's what's going on, here's what happened, and created this reality so that the kids wouldn't, you know, screw up the story. <laughs> so Yeah, they wouldn't be that kid who's like, I was hiding in the barn the whole time. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like the balloon kid. <laughs> yeah, and and so, yeah, children are impressionable. Also, memories are impressionable. And often we remember things the way the way maybe we've been told we should remember them. And so you can't really take the memory of a child and go by a 100%. You know, we've seen that in numerous situations. I do, however, believe he believes it. And so it's, I think it's interesting. He's, he seems at times like a very sad, broken man. He also seems to be at times a very sweet person. I noticed when the there is a journalist that comes, an investigative journalist that was on the case originally. She comes back to see him, and then they both go out to visit Lorraine Warren. This was when she was still mm-hmm. alive. And the way he interacts with them is very sweet. And so he seems like he has a good soul in there, but then... He also has, he's divorced. And I think part of the reason his life didn't work out with his ex-wife was just because he's so, he has a lot of anger too. And a lot of, I mean, there's just, he's been in therapy most of his life. He still is. I, it's just, it's very tragic. The whole thing's very tragic, but I do think it's very interesting. And by the time you get to the end, if you've never seen it, uh, I believe it's on Tubi. By the time you get to the end, you don't really, it's not like you have definitive answers of everything. You don't. You just are looking at it through this guy's point of view. And I also find it interesting that neither of his siblings wanted anything to do with his documentary. So I would love to hear them talk on the subject, though, because I get the idea that Either they are, I mean, it could go one of two ways. Either either they are saying none of this ever happened you're making this up or and they don't want to talk about it for that reason or they're exactly the opposite and they are even more traumatized and don't want to talk about it so i'd be curious to hear what their thoughts are but getting this you know glimpse through his eyes i just think is very fascinating from a humanistic point of view yeah yeah i think it's a great documentary i mean despite my knee-jerk hatred of all things warren um i do think that there is something interesting to be mined from miamiville horror and you know for me it it just feels very tragic and Uh, yeah um that that's the thing i walk away from is like oh this poor guy like his parents did a number on him yeah i mean whether anything happened or not his life was ruined Right. You know? And, you know, I mean, from my perspective, it was like his life was ruined because his parents wanted to turn a buck and didn't really care about the effect that it might have on on their children. Um, yeah, it's very sad. Very sad. But it's a great documentary. Like for people who have never seen Miamiville Horror, please, please do yourself a favor. It's fascinating. You know, um, like when. Elizabeth Warren shows up with all of her chickens and whatnot. I just want to set fire to, you know, the entire <laughs> northeast of the country. Lorraine, but... <laughs> Elizabeth said the whole different kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was reading an article earlier about Elizabeth Warren uh, uh, giving the business to Kamala Harris. So uh, she's been on my mind. And when is she not? Get like it, I'm, a, I'm attracted by the professorial types. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren is, you know, that that's my supermodel. Um, <laughs> less so a Lorraine. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good movie. Um, I So let me tell you, here's the reason I got the screen box. Is I like uh, found footage movies. Oh, yeah. And someone uh, it's just uh, the buzz had been going and I think somebody on the discord channel was like, Hey, um, are you going to watch the out, the outwaters, which was getting a little bit of press. And I was like, I absolutely will watch the outwaters. And sure enough, it popped up on Screenbox. and Screenbox had some deal where it was like, Hey, do you want Screenbox for six months for 15 bucks? And I was like, 
yeah, fine. Because I want to watch The Outwaters, and I'll probably get around to watching Terrifier 2 uh, as well and seeing what else they got on there. But th- those were the two things. I was like, uh, I feel like I need to give Terrifier 2 a day in court because I hate myself, apparently. Um, <laughs> but Because I'm a masochist. But, uh, but I also, like, I really want to watch The Outwaters. I've I'd, I'd read some interesting stuff about it. You know, it, this falls into that skinnamarink trap of, you know, this is the scariest movie ever made. And that happens, what, five, six times a year where the yeah. scariest movie ever made comes down the pipe. And what, the, what those hy- hyperbolic articles are really saying is, here is something that is interesting and noteworthy within the genre. It's kind of how I read that now. And so I picked up Screenbox, watched The Outwaters, did it kind of in the best possible way, which was how I should have watched Skinnamarink, um, which was, it was just me in a in my office and the dark headphones on. And I think The Outwaters is, uh, the way that I've described it is like if Benson and Moorhead made a found footage movie, which they kind of did recently, but if they made a more direct found footage kind of movie excuse me and it it didn't have quite the resolution not to you know get all wordplay with uh benson and moorhead movie titles but it's you know like resolution is a good example of this like resolution is a lot of like i don't understand what's going on i don't understand what's going on i don't understand what's going on now at the end of the movie i kind of think i have an idea of what's going on and if somebody asked me to i could kind of give them the rough outline of what i think is happening and but i may not be right you know like that's how that's how i feel about resolution it, it it's there is a uh, an apparent thing happening and once you get to the endless i think that makes a lot more sense but Anyway, in resolution, I don't think it's it's a tidy answer is is sort of what I'm getting at. And The Outwaters is even less so where it feels like what is going on could be one of three or four things. And that's not necessarily a criticism, but it also doesn't make for a great landing point for your movie. You know, because like Resolution, spoilers, by the way, for Resolution, for those of you who have not seen it, uh, you know, the the movie's only been out for, what, a decade at this point? Right. Um, But when you get to the end of that and, you know, they're like calling up to the sky like, we're sorry, we can do this better. Um, you know, there there is this sense of like, oh, there's something kind of cosmic at work here. And there's a little bit of that within the outwaters, a little bit of like, is this happening in a time loop? Is this guy, this other person that they're seeing? Um, And the premise of it, by the way, uh, uh, I probably should have started with this, but the premise is that these four people, it's a singer, um, her musician pal that has worked with her on like cutting a couple of singles um, a director and somebody to do like hair and makeup all kind of take off and they all know each other a little bit and they're taken off to go into the middle of the desert uh, and film a video for this song that they've recorded. And then when they get out there, like weird shit starts to happen. And then, you know, do they all die? Question mark. Maybe how did they die is the bigger question. If they died at all. Um, it's, you know, that, that's kind of the rough sketch of the premise, but it's just so like, it it feels very experimental and it's very ambiguous and that's fine as an interesting, like experiment in filmmaking. It's just not the most satisfying thing to watch. Um, and and it uh, reminded me a ton of skin and which is also extremely experimental, but I think is way more satisfying because I think it gets to some genuine scares. And when you get to the end of Skin and Marink, I think you kind of know what's going on uh, for the most part. You know, or I could, 
I could give you a plot for Skin of Marine that I think answers most of the questions of that movie. I don't know that I could do the same thing for The Outwaters. Hmm. Um, so not selling it real hard though i you know the thing is it, like as found footage goes the fact that it is so experimental and surreal like there is something to be said for that that it, it's ambitious and it's not uh, it's not entirely successful in in realizing that ambition but i i like the fact that it's trying to do something that's different and so, like, if you're a found footage movie fan, I'm like, ah, eh, maybe give it a spin. Um, just don't expect at the end of it to be like, well, that was an interesting movie about X, you know? Like, you're never going to reach that point where, uh, or at least I didn't, like, somebody way smarter than me might come along and be like, listen, you dumb shit, this is what was going on in The Outwaters, and you just weren't smart enough to pick up on it. But I feel like I'm a fairly savvy viewer, and I've definitely paid attention. Typically, I think, yes. I think that people would agree with that. So, <laughs> You're but I didn't, savvy. I didn't, savvy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know nothing by the end of that movie. I, I felt like, you know, like, wait, was that a monster that he saw? Or was it some interdimensional creature? Is this all a time thing that's happening? Yeah, I just, I don't know. And, but I... It, 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 again it kind of asks interesting questions it just doesn't answer any of those questions in a satisfying way yeah yeah i don't know a lot of times uh i mean it can go either way but i would not be surprised if it ended up frustrating me oh for sure that's a perfectly reasonable reaction to that movie but it's head and shoulders over hey we're uh a web uh like we've got ourselves a youtube channel and we're going to a haunted asylum and whoopsie doodle it turns out haunted stuff is real like that genre of found footage <laughs> uh i will take something like the outwaters over that tire trope you know any day of the week so i like i said i'm giving you a lot of points for just trying to do something a little bit different and having and and the other thing i i give it credit for is that the characters are all good they're really like, these are people that, if not people I want to hang out with, they're at least people I recognize as human beings, you know? As opposed to, like, the, <laughs> you know, borderline porn actors of a lot of these found footage movies. Again, that's that very tired. And the reason I keep bringing this up is because I also watched uh, Six Tape or Sex Tape. Um, which was the Bernard Rose thing. The guy who did Candyman did a found footage movie that is very much a, hey, we're going into this old abandoned building and whoopsie doodle, it's haunted. Ah. And that just has it on my mind of like, man, there are a million of these out there. Yeah. And not any of them are, I mean, aside from what, Gone Jam and... um grave encounters are probably the only two that are worth anything i happen to really be a fan of deep house as well although it's a little bit different they weren't looking for ghosts they were just fascinated by the fact that there was a town that was buried under water did you ever see that i don't think i oh yeah yeah, yeah i did i did I, that was okay, okay. Yeah, yeah yeah deep yeah. house is, I, is I really liked that one yeah. and i agree with the other two uh and i think that that's I mean, unless something I'm just not thinking of, but yeah, when I think of successful films with that premise, those are the ones I think of. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, eh, you know, depending on the day, uh, Gonji Am is probably my favorite of those. Uh, but you know, uh, Grave Encounters I think is quite good too. Yeah. I even like the second one. Yeah, I, I'm a little cooler on the second one than you are, but it's, you know, I like I like the premise. It's such a good premise, and because it's such a good premise, everybody does it, and only a couple of people have done it with any real success. And, you know, it's sort of like playing, you know, Rhapsody in Blue or something. Like, you get the the right people together with the right instruments, you can take a stab at it, 
but most of the time it's going to sound like hot garbage unless you know how to play the instruments. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the Outwaters available uh, on Screenbox for not a lot of money if you're interested in seeing that, which I can't imagine you would be after this discussion we've had. But um, I, again, I you know I'm I don't. I'm I'm glad that I saw it because it, it's a nice reference point for other found footage movies, which maybe is not again the best reason to watch a movie of like, well, this helps me have a conversation about found footage in a different way. Um, but you know, <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> so uh what what about you? What else have you been watching? Okay. Well, I have another theatrical film Ooh. that we went to see <laughs> on five dollar tuesday mm -hmm. and that was children of the corn oh no kidding okay yeah yeah that movie that no one saw <laughs> and well. it was so limited that when it was playing in our local theater but there was one show time every day and it was nine thirty at night and that is it like that's all you got <laughs> so we went to go see the nine thirty show on tuesday and honestly, I had fun with it. I did. It is, I went in with a totally wrong idea of what it was going to be about. I don't know where I heard this or how I picked it up, but I thought that it was a prequel to the original. Like this was going to show all the kids, like how the kids got all religified and all of that. <laughs> how he who walks behind the rose... He who walks behind the road. He's waiting for you, Malachi. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not that. Not that at all. As a matter of fact, it takes place in present day, and it doesn't take place in Gatlin. It takes place in Rylson, and it's a totally different story. So it also says, though, based on the short story by Stephen King, so I'm guessing this is a reimagining of the original story. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh... The, the, it, you know so whatever it's that honestly when you're talking about a children of the corn movie that really doesn't matter i guess <laughs> like nothing really matters it is honestly better than most of the sequels and or at least the ones that i've seen i haven't seen them all but of the ones i've seen i had more fun with this movie than i've had with any of those and there isn't an isaac but there is an eden and she is this 12 year old you I'm brought Bo. Mm -hmm. You will. I'm telling you, you will love this kid. You will. She is arch and evil <laughs> and over the top. And it is phenomenal. Like she's the best thing about the movie is how evil this little 12 year old girl is. And it's, yeah, oh, I'm just like, yes. Now I'm not saying the whole movie is good or anything. It's, it's not a good movie, but I did have fun with it. I did think it was interesting that they did this whole ergot thing that unfortunately didn't really go anywhere <laughs> but the idea here is that this is a town that is built on corn around corn this is their industry and the corn is all dying it's all infected with ergot now they don't i don't think they actually call it by name but they do mention it being hallucinatory and I want to say they mentioned the Salem witch trials a couple times. So, you know, even if they don't say it by name, you know, that's what they're talking about. And you think, oh, OK, well, this would be really cool if this was the reason that all the kids like they're trying to give it a more grounded scientific reason that these kids got all with crackers. <laughs> right. And. No, it doesn't really, uh, it, it, nothing really happens with it. It just, that's a shame, but it, it is, it is killing the crops. And so the adults in the town are considering be, uh, getting subsidies and just giving up on the corn altogether. But the kids don't like that because he who walks lives in the corn and he who walks has taken care of Eden. She ran away from an organ or an organage, an orphanage. <laughs> an orphanage. Yeah, she ran away from the, an or there was a whole bunch of shit going on. An orphanage, beginning. yes. She ran away, yes. As you know, as shit tends to happen in an organage. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> she... yeah, that, that's 
either a place where you go to get spare kidneys and livers mm-hmm. or a place uh, where only pest control people live. Or my god piano. That's where I could take my god piano to get Sure. It. An organ and yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she ends up in the corn and he who walks comforts her and takes care of her. And so she then loves him. And then she builds this, all of these kids who follow he who walks. It's not religious like it is in the original film. And I think it is in the story too. It, mm, but it's, Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it doesn't it doesn't really touch religion. It doesn't mention the Bible that I recall even at all. So it's a totally different kind of look at the virtually the same idea, but the kids are real pissed because they, they don't want the, and that's what the impetus of all of this is, is that the parents are going to give up on the corn and the kids are like, no, we love the corn. And so (laughs) they end up going through their, you know, what happens? Like, I don't want to spoil it because I know everybody out there is going to watch it. Sure, but... sure, sure. <laughs> All people are talking about. <laughs> but I will say this. He who walks <laughs> is this most amazing CGI corn monster. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I was like, what? He reminds me of something, but I can't think of what it is. But there is something from another movie. Can I, without having seen it, can I offer a, at least a point yes. of reference? Yes. What about the meat monster from John Dies at the End? <sighs> Maybe. Okay. Yeah, that might, yeah. Yeah, that might be even... I'm kind of, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the praying mantis from the Dracula. Ooh. <laughs> only, only it doesn't look like that. There's some, it also kind of reminds me of, uh, oh, what's his name from Babylon five. There's an alien in Babylon five. He's like a robot, but it, I, I don't know. There's just, it's an amalgamation of a lot of different things, mm-hmm. but it's woven corn stalks that are, they like you know humanoid and animated and (laughs) you don't see a lot of it they do keep it in the shadows a lot toward the end he does come out in the open and then there's even a bit with you know involving flames and stuff but there is just the amount of stupidity in this movie is and is just incredible there's a scene where the one girl who she's the oldest girl in the town i guess and she Bo, she is our lead character and she is the smart one and (laughs) at one point they kidnap her and douse her in tractor fuel because they're gonna you know set her on fire (laughs) sure well she gets up gets away and starts running through the cornfield, leaving this trail of tractor fuel that you just, it's like she's, and I said at the time, it's like she's wearing one of those camel backpacks, you know, and she just has the hose like hanging out the bottom and she's running through the cornfield because this is not, this is not the amount of wetness that you'd get from being sprayed down with something. This is the (laughs) amount of wetness that you would get. It's like Jason and Jason takes Manhattan just, wet through the whole goddamn movie it's like those footprints in scream three that kelly rutherford leaves at the beginning of the movie where she gets out of the shower and she walks through the house and there's this whole trail of wet ass footprints like it just doesn't work that way in real life but this is obviously setting up something that's going to be done with this trail of tractor fuel so there had a reason for it but it's silly as hell and so um, like I said, the I had fun with it, but it's mainly because of the little girl who played Eden, and she was just, I thought, fantastic. Just hilarious and, and, and twirling her mustache, and she was great. To be a young actress pulling off a villain, I mean, if you liked Isaac in the first one, you'd, you'd like her. It was She's pretty much the new Isaac, is what that is. Okay. But... <clears throat> Also, the, the, but the, my biggest problem with the movie is that there really isn't anyone to root for. Every single grown-up, everyone in this town is a straight-up asshole. At whether they are abusive or cheating on their husbands or, 
you know, screaming at their kid. Like you, there are no good parents in this town and there are no good grownups. So you can't really root for them. But now the kids are murdering bastards, so you can't really <laughs> root for them either. So you're kind of stuck going, what the hell do I care? Let the whole place burn to the ground. So there's that. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's a thing I will see at some point. I, whether it's good or not. I mean, I mean, it's inoffensive. If you have the time, I do recommend it just for the little girl. I really think you'll get a kick. You personally will get a kick out of her, but just because she's hilarious. All it's- right. <laughs> well, careful. Careful, Mordecai. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Mind you. What does he say? Oh, shit. What does he say? Mind your. Mind you, don't cut yourself, Mordecai. Oh, yeah. Mind you, don't cut yourself, Mordecai. Yeah. (laughs) Um, damn it. I love that movie so much. All right. So we'll end with... uh, Fart. (laughs) You're right. Fart. And he just... What was he? Hurled peanuts at him? Yeah. (laughs) Just to get him to stop scratching stuff on the wall. It's very funny. Um, So... uh, Weirdly, I don't know that I've done this in maybe ever, but I'm going to wrap this episode up with uh, a, the final film, which okay. is the movie I went to see today with one of the kids. Um, we went to see 65, that new Adam oh. Driver movie um, where he has to shoot dinosaurs in the face with a gun. <laughs> and so the so here's the premise, and I didn't know this going into it. And you, you may have... Uh, have seen an ad for it and I, which I, I never did i never saw any ads for it um i just knew it was adam driver v dinosaurs and i was like i'll go see that but uh the thing i didn't understand about the movie is that he is not from earth like adam driver and his uh little girl companion are aliens from another planet oh. and, and the whole premise is and this is like the first two minutes of the movie i'm not like this isn't a reveal of the film but they are on uh, like this exploratory mission. Adam Driver ha- um, has a daughter who is very sick and apparently comes from a planet also that has shitty health care because he's like, hey, if I do this two year like planetary mission, I, I get triple salary and I can pay for our, our daughter to have this procedure that will save her life, even though I'm going to be missing two years of our marriage and our child's life and all that. And so that's why he's doing this. He's in a spaceship carrying people that are in like cryo chambers to some destination, but they get beset by uh, like an asteroid storm and the, the ship gets blown off course or thrown off course and it crash lands on earth 65 million years ago. And so he and this little girl, who is the only other survivor, have to get across this primordial landscape populated by dinosaurs to get to an escape ship to get off Earth and get back to their planet. And so that's the premise of the movie. And it is, and I mean this with as much affection as I can muster, a total B movie. Um, oh, it's okay. it's PG-13. Um, which is fine. Like the, this movie does not need to be like a hardcore R rated movie. And it is, um, geez, how it like, like I just saw this. So I'm still kind of processing it. It's violent enough for a movie like this, like where you're, you've got a dude and little girl fighting dinosaurs. Like it's got some scary stuff in it. It was me and the, the girl who went to see it together. And there were moments where she was like hiding her eyes and was like, I don't like this. This is like, you know, this is creepy. And I was like, I a hundred percent get it. Like, don't even sweat it. Um, but by the end of the movie, she was kind of more into it and, and, you know, like surprise, surprise, Adam Driver finds a a bit of a surrogate daughter and this girl that he is trying to take care of and, and get her to safety. 
and there are T-Rexes that show up and other dinosaurs. And, you know, the, the thing that I, I thought it reminded me of like an older, like eighties, nineties B movie though, is it's not just that it's a lot of, you know, Oh my goodness, here's some quicksand. Oh my goodness. Here's uh you know, hot geysers. Oh my goodness. Here is this cave we're trapped in. And it feels very episodic in a way that I really like. And the movie's only like 90 minutes long, which is also to its credit. It's like, here's the premise. We are now on earth. Now he's got to get this girl to safety. And that's your movie, you know, like uh, an hour, 10 minutes of this 90 minute movie are just that. Uh, so it doesn't fool. Yeah. It doesn't fool around. It gets to the business. You know, there's nothing about it, though, that's, like, exceptional. There's nothing where I'm like, well, that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a movie. But, like, Adam Driver's very good in it because he's a good actor and he's committed to it. And his relationship with the little girl is really good and satisfying. Um, The dinosaur effects are good. Um, Probably better than cocaine bears, although none of the dinosaurs are on cocaine, which is a real problem. Um, cocaine T-Rex. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Um, you know, like everything about it is fine to good. It's just, there's nothing exceptional about it, but I think that's kind of okay for a movie like this. Kind of like cocaine bear where it's like, n- none of this is going to change your life. This is not like one of the best movies of the year, but it was a really entertaining, breezy 90 minutes. Well, sometimes that's all you want and all you need. Right. That's kind of how I felt about it. Like coming out of the movie, I was like, you know what? That was, it, you know, and in fact, I heard another group of people talking about it where they were like, you know, that wasn't bad. It was pretty good, but it was, I don't know. And I was, I was like, yeah, I get it. It's a total B movie. It is like, you know, it's just what the premise calls for, which is hey, what if this dude had to save a little girl by crossing this valley filled with dinosaurs and whatnot to get on a spaceship and get the hell out of Dodge? What would that movie look like? Oh, it turns out this is what that movie would look like. And it's totally fine. Um, It feels very video gamey in a lot of ways. Um, Just, I guess, based on the premise, like if you played a naughty dog game like the people who do last of us and uncharted Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing like if they had made this game this is kind of what it would be of like oh yeah here's the emotional hook to it and the dinosaurs are a threat but also you've just got to get through this environment that's very hostile as well and yeah it was it was totally fine. We had a totally fine time and we ate popcorn and drank sodas and watched this movie and she got scared a few times and I laughed a couple of times and then it was over and then we went home and everybody was happy. You know, that was that was kind of the experience with 65. And again, I think that's okay. I think there is plenty of room in this world for a movie that just entertains you for 90 minutes and then you're done with it. Look, I don't need everything I watch to challenge my beliefs about everything. Like, I, it's fine. I'm, sometimes I just want to be entertained like, you know, cocaine bear. Yeah, right. Uh, it, like, that's, sometimes that's just all I need. And there, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe it's uh, like I I've had the movie everything everywhere all at once on my mind. Um, because, uh, Maya hasn't seen it. I'm like, you should really watch this. Like, this is a great movie. Are you guys watching the Oscars tonight? Uh, probably not. It's been a long time since I've sat down to watch the Oscars. I kind of don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, Brian's the reason I don't, I was always very religious about watching the Oscars just cause I, you know, like to, I don't know, I take notes about movies I'm interested in and stuff like that, but I haven't in years. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of use the nomination list as like, oh, I should see that movie, you know, and see what all the fuss is about. Um, like I'm rooting for everything everywhere. I hope Michelle Yeoh wins. Yeah, I um, am too. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. And, but you know, I, th- uh, it, thinking about everything everywhere all at once and, and being like, you know, it's great that that's nominated for an Oscar, 
uh, for Best Picture. I think it truly was, unlike most Oscar uh, viewings, it's like, yeah, that was probably the best movie I saw last year. Like, it, it's funny and weird and surreal, and it's got great action, and it's got real heart, and it's emotional. Hot dog fingers. It's got hot dog fingers and dildos and, like, everything you want out of a movie. <laughs> And and I loved it. Like, it, but it, again, at the end of the movie, like I was kind of choked up. Like, it's this really beautiful story about, yeah. you know, family and and uh, you know, like it, it's one of those rare movies that does everything right. And uh, so I've I've been thinking about that movie because I'm been trying to sell it to Maya without kind of giving anything away about it because she doesn't really know much about it. And I'm like, you just, it, it's something we need to watch because it's really good and funny. And yes, it's nominated for a bunch of Oscars, but don't let that scare you. Like it's also incredibly entertaining and really fun. And it's not just some heady think piece, even though there is that aspect of it, you know, uh, which is what makes it really kind of a special movie is that it really checks every box. Um, but I was thinking about that in terms of 65, where it's like, oh, this is a movie that, like, come this time next month, if you told me that I saw 65, I may not believe you, you know? <laughs> where, like, no, you right. really saw that Adam Driver, Adam Driver dinosaur movie, I'd be like, you go to hell. You are a liar. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but, I mean, to, to your point, kind of what we were talking about, like, it doesn't, like, not everything has to be that. Everything... Not everything has to be everything everywhere all at once. Some things can be cocaine bear. And 65 is more in line with a cocaine bear than it is an everything everywhere all at once. And that's that's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, if if you are in the mood for a total matinee kind of movie, like if there had been a cartoon at the beginning of this in a newsreel and then you know like crash cork and fights dinosaurs it's that kind of thing and but in a weird way i was like you know they kind of don't make them like this anymore like everything has to be this big budget extravaganza as opposed to just this kind of oddball premise with a good actor and some good sequences mm -hmm. and not great but really totally acceptable to very good you know like uh it, it's that damning with faint praise thing that i do all the time but it's it's not damning it it's like oh yeah i, I think there's you know i like i see stuff aiming for the fences all the time they're like this is gonna be the movie that knocks your dick off and you know like <laughs> whether it's the spectacle of an mcu movie or you know the heady stuff that you see on streaming channels where it's like, you know, like the last of us is a good example of that, where it's, it, it's like, this is going to put you through the emotional ringer and you're never going to be the same after you see this. And I'm like, eh, sometimes you just want to watch Adam driver shoot a dinosaur in the face. And that's all right. That is definitely true. <laughs> I, I watch Adam driver do just about anything. Yeah, yeah, he's really good at it, you know, as he is in pretty much everything, so. Yeah, it turns out he's a pretty good actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, uh, let's wrap up real quick with uh, anything in, in particular you're looking forward to seeing uh, well, uh, in the next I month. I would like to go see Scream 6. I totally forgot it was coming out this weekend, and I didn't get to go see it. Mm -hmm. So we might. Oh, there was a kid. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but there was a kid um, dressed up like Ghostface the in the lobby oh. as we were leaving the, the theater. I was like, oh, right Yay. on. Good for you, yeah. weird kid. Yeah, we'll probably try to go for $5 Tuesday, maybe, and check it out. Um, I Because I definitely do want to see it. I just totally... I was thinking it was next weekend. I don't know why, but I also forgot that this weekend was the time change, so... Apparently, I am not. I am not everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> I am all <laughs> over the place, but at various times. <laughs> that was a bad. That was a bad joke. I apologize. It's fine. It's fine. No, no, no. Don't apologize for that. I didn't think that. that through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I do want to watch Scream Six. I'm looking forward to Evil Dead Rise, and uh, yeah. Hey, do you know that Salem's Lot oh, 
is dropping the same day as, no, as Evil Dead Rise. No, I didn't know it was coming out that soon. What? <gasps> yeah, isn't that crazy? Is it coming out in the theater? I Holy think shit. so. What am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to see them both. I reckon. Probably. What about you? What are you looking forward to? Um, I may end up going to see Renfield. Oh, I do want to see that. Which, which, like, I think you and I will both probably see Scream 6 between now and the next time we talk. And uh, maybe Renfield will will sneak yeah, into that as well. I want to see that. So I'm, I'm, you know, curious about that movie. And then, I mean, depending on when we record next, but then, you know, Evil Dead Rise and Salem's Lot are both, like, you know, the 21st of April. So that's probably going to be a thing where like, we'll record next month. And then, uh, the, when we reconvene in May, we'll be talking about evil dead Salem's lot and, you know, whatever other nonsense happens to drop in that window. But, uh, I'm excited about like, I want to look Salem's lots. One of my favorite things ever. And I, I am so excited that, you know, such a thing exists. I, I hope I do it's too. Good. I mean, that film was pivotal in my becoming a horror fan, the, or the original mm-hmm. miniseries. And it has always meant so much to me. It's one of my favorite Stephen King books. So yeah, that is a property that I really care deeply about. So I'm in now, and I'm not also though, one of those people that gets pissy about a remake. I don't really care if it's not good, then I just won't watch it again. Like I'm fine with that, but I really want it to be good. <laughs> like I'm, I really, really want it to be good. Yeah. Yeah. And I need to see knock at the cabin. I may we did see watch that. that this weekend. How was it? I thought it was pretty good. I, it wasn't okay. as, um, I kind of hope that, uh, I guess I was looking for more, but it was, it was good. I thought all the performances were really good. I actually did enjoy it quite a bit. I think I gave it a four. So it was pretty damn good. It just didn't blow my socks off. But the little girl yeah. is so good. She's so cute. Like, uh, you really love this family. You do. And so, yeah. Plus Rupert Grant. That's the first time I've ever heard his American accent. He did pretty well. I was impressed. And Dave Bautista was really, yeah. Oh, everybody was really good. Like, I do recommend it. I enjoyed it a lot. I just, um, I don't know. I don't know if I was expecting something a little more bombastic. <laughs> I don't know. It was a little quieter than yeah, I was yeah. expecting it to be. Considering we're talking about, you know, the apocalypse and all of that. But it was good. All right. All right. I'll, I'll check that out. So, uh, all right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this time, Jamie. Well, okay. So, so uh, thanks to everyone for listening. We will be back in uh, a month with more nonsense. Yes, always with the nonsense. And, uh, yeah, fresh. ever with the Are nonsense right? and the cocaine. Quite frankly, <laughs> yeah, Lot, lots more cocaine <laughs> as well. So, I am a right, method well, podcaster, well. you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bear's not the only person on that dust. Um, All right, everybody. We'll see you in a month. Bye. Bye.